If you've got the Elgato prompter, but you're a little bit confused or unclear on some of the settings, I wanted to make a quick guide where I go through every single setting in the Camera Hub software, so that way you can be aware of how to promptly use your prompter We'll just go straight into it. So the Camera Hub software that the prompter requires does have camera and effects options. We're not gonna talk about those today because you don't actually need the prompter for those. Those are for, you know, if you have a webcam, especially like an Elgato face cam connected, we're gonna focus specifically on the prompter tab, which kind of makes sense. And you have these different settings here, display, content, appearance, scrolling, and overlays. And in case you're wondering, I am using the version 2.0, update of the Camera Hub software. It's gotten a lot of updates since the prompter's initial release, now almost a couple of years ago. So first off, if we open this display tab, the output option is the Elgato prompter. You don't really have any other options. That kind of makes sense. If you have multiple prompters connected, that's where you could connect those there. There is a power option, which can sort of be a little bit confusing. And actually, I do have this angle here where you can see my prompter live. Well, live on this recording, at least. And I can kind of show you what I mean by this power button. So if I click the power button, the prompter turns off, right? Like it is, that's great. There's no power button on the physical prompter itself. It's nice that you can do that, except kind of not really. You might not be able to see it in the video, but here I can tell that this display is still active and there's actually even still a green dot on the display to show that it's active. So the prompter is really more darkened rather than turned off. So it's not a true power switch. I was very excited when they initially introduced this because there is no power option on the prompter and this will turn it off so it's not, you know, on, I guess, if you don't want it on, but it doesn't actually turn the prompter off or stop, you know, stop it from using power or anything like that. For my setup, I have the prompter running through a, what the heck is this? This is a Sonatec Echo Thunderbolt hub down here. And what I like about that is that hub actually has a power button on it. So I have some peripherals that I don't use all the time running through that hub. And then when I need them, I can turn the hub on. When I don't need them, I can turn it off. And so I kind of do have, have a physical power button for the prompter that way, even though the prompter itself and the software don't have physical buttons. And then we do have our brightness control. So the, the shot you're seeing of me kind of down here in the corner, this is through the prompter through right here. I have my Canon EOS R right there. I have my brightness set at 58%. I love how bright the prompter's display is, but if you boost it all the way to 100, it is very, very bright. And I feel like if I come back over here to my main shot, you might start to notice a little bit of glare. If I turn that off, see how there's a little more contrast. And if I turn that all the way up, there's sort of this blue haze because the screen is a little too bright. So, and whatever's on the screen also is going to, you know, if you have blue, it's going to kind of give a blue shade. If you have red, it's going to give a red shade. So I usually keep my brightness at about 53%. 55-ish percent, and that seems to work pretty well for me. And the prompter itself is still plenty bright for me to read. Sometimes you can turn the prompter so dim that then you can't actually see what's on the display. And so it's not causing any glare or haze or anything, but then it's not super helpful because you can't see what's on there. So personally, I like to keep my brightness at about halfway, but I do love how bright the screen can go because I would rather have more brightness than I need than not enough brightness. Jumping down here now to the content tab, Let's dive through here. So we have display, text, and chat options. Right now I have the display option, so that means that the prompter is just another display. I can drag other windows from other applications right over there. It's just an additional display on my computer. This is currently connected to my M1 Mac Mini. The text option is where it becomes like a traditional prompter, and that's where you're gonna have words on screen, text on screen, and that's probably what most people think about when you have a text option. I have a script from another video I'm working on, and then there's a chat option. Currently, the chat option option just works with Twitch. So if you click the little plus sign, it will bring up a dialog box to put in your Twitch channel information, and then it will automatically add your Twitch chat to the prompter. So that way you can, you know, go through and have your chat right in front of you without having to look away. It currently doesn't have support for YouTube or anything else. So what I do a lot of the times when I'm streaming is I leave it on display mode, and then I use Ecamm Live for my live streams. That's what I'm actually even recording this on right now. And then I can just drag my comment window here. I don't have any comments, but you can kind of see it in the prompter there. I'm not streaming, so there's no comments. I just sort of put those there and then I go through the chat that way. So it's it ends up being the same effect. You could do this even just with like YouTube's pop out chat or something if you just want to drag the chat window directly over here and go through it. I like Ecamm because I can click on the chat things as they pop up and then it will add them to the screen in a really cool stylized way, which I really like. But so all that to say, I pretty much have only ever used the display and text options, but there is a chat option, which could be really cool if you're very active on Twitch. Now I'm gonna keep the content tab open as we open up the appearance tab, because this is a little bit contextual. 
if I have the display set and I open up appearance, you kind of notice I can't change anything. So that I can't use this tab at all, it's, it doesn't matter. If I go to the text tab, now I have some more options over here. And that is because I can change the appearance of my text. And the same is true for chat. So if you do have that Twitch chat option, you can adjust how that looks here. It almost makes it like it's text that's being you know, prompted up on the screen. Going to the regular text chat, I have a script, like I said, from another video up here. This is where you can change your font. You can change your font size, your horizontal margin. I kind of have my margins. I don't know if you can kind of tell, but they're they're fairly narrow. Like I could have a really wide script on my prompter here, but I like keeping it more narrow because then that stops my eyes from going back and forth too much. So I kind of usually have it something sort of like that. And that way, as I read this, even though my eyes are going back and forth across the text, you don't notice it as much. If it's going back and forth across a really wide display, your head might turn, your eyes might turn, and it becomes very obvious that you're reading a script. Always important to emphasize that when you're using a prompter or something like this, whether you're reading a script or an outline, it is a skill. And so it does take a little bit of time to, to learn how to do that and to make sure that you're comfortable with it and that it looks and feels natural. It's, you know, more natural for some people than others. And if you're someone who's just like, I cannot read a script, that is completely fine. I recommend just using outlines or something to keep you on track, but you don't have to use word for word scripts. Or if you just wanna use your prompter as a confidence monitor and you don't put your script up there at all, that's cool too. Kind of getting off track a little bit. Vertical margin is sort of the opposite. It's, you know, how narrow do you want this to be? So what you can kind of do in the prompter window here, you can sort of see my camera lens shining through the glass. You could kind of try to really line up your text so it's like right over your camera lens. And that way you know that when you're reading, it's your eyes definitely aren't going to go beyond your camera lens. But it's kind of like a, you kind of have to find a sweet spot between what's practical and then what looks good on camera. So I usually kind of keep these settings right around here, 29, 30% on horizontal margin, about 25 on vertical. And that's pretty good. And that's also with my font size. So my font is set to a size that I can actually read it from far away, depending on your eyesight and how close you are to your prompter, your font size might need to change, which could also change your margins. Same with line spacing. This is just personal preference. I like 110%. That looks natural. But if I change that, you know, you can space things out a little bit and, you know, whatever you need in order to be able to read things effectively as using them, that's good too. You can also change your text and background colors. White text on a black background is the most common, you know, go to any TV studio, broadcast studio, whatever, and you see people using prompters. It's, I can pretty much guarantee you're gonna see white text on a black background. It's kind of the standard, it's the highest contrast, it's the easiest to read. And it also, the black background makes the prompter pretty dark so you don't get that bright glare. Like when I had it in display mode and I turned up the brightness, all the colors of the display were shining on it. You don't have that problem when you have a black background. And then you do have this opacity option down here, which is a really cool option that's pretty unique to the Elgato prompter. And what that does is it then combines your display mode and your text mode. So you can kind of see my text is fading out like back to the future when Marty like didn't succeed in his mission all the way. And basically what you can do there is you can overlay your script on something else. So if I wanted to use the prompter as a reference monitor to make sure I can see myself and that I'm clear and I'm in focus, and I also wanna have a script over it at the same time, you can do that that way. I usually just have one or the other. I'm usually using display or text, otherwise I get too confused because it's too many things at once but that's how you can do that there. I can close these tabs and now we can open up scrolling. There's some definitely some pretty cool options here. So right off the bat, we have different modes for our scrolling. We have constant and voice sync. Constant means when you press play, the script will scroll automatically and you don't have to control it. Obviously, if you need to stop it or you know rewind it a little bit to go back and redo something, you'll have to do that manually. But it, for example, right now, if I press constant, we do auto scroll, we can adjust the speed. We can even choose if we want the script to loop and then we can, we'll talk about the other things in a second. But if I press play here, you'll notice now the script is just going and it is not dependent on me talking. If I stop talking, the script still goes. It's going at the same constant speed. It doesn't matter if I'm you know, barely catching up or if I'm already like way past this text, it's just going at that speed. So that's what a constant scroll does. It will just kind of keep going. And if you want to do auto loop, you can just loop it. So if you have like a relatively short script that you think you might need to go through several times, that might be an easy way to do it. And you just kind of take one take, let it loop through, do the other take, and then you, you know, piece together the best bits from that maybe. Voice sync is, I have a whole video on this when they first announced it, but that's where 
the software can listen to your voice and then go with what you're saying, which is kind of cool. And there's some fun stuff you can do. You do need to select your microphone. In this case, I'm using the Rodecaster. So we will do that. And now once I hit play, voice sync will become active. There's a little thing up here. I don't think you can see it in this shot, but it says inactive. When I press play, it will say getting ready and then it will say active and then it will just go with my voice. Voice sync does use some sort of AI or machine learning and Basically what it has to do is go through your script to become active before it can like follow your voice. So it kind of needs to like transcribe your script and then it can follow your voice more easily. So right here, my voice sync is active. Right now you see it's not moving at all because I'm not saying anything that's on screen. But if I jump into that, and the reason I specifically wanted to focus on using OBSBOT cameras with the YOLO box is because the two systems just pair together exceptionally well, especially if you're looking to create a minimal setup that still has enough power for podcasts. So it followed my voice there and now I'm going off script and it stopped because I'm not saying anything there. What's really cool about this and I talked about it in my dedicated video for voice sync is you can use this for outlines a lot or even scripts where you go a little bit and then you read what's on the screen and then you can kind of go off and you're, you know, you're on tangent that you're improvising and then you can come back and whenever you say key phrases that are on screen, the script will keep going. So for example, right now as I'm talking, the prompter's not doing anything. It might bump up a little bit when I hit like keywords or phrases accidentally, but it's not moving at all. If I start saying things that are on screen, let's start at the beginning. Gear being used. First, the Yolobox Ultra is a multi-camera production suite for live streaming and recording. See how it started going as soon as I started talking, but now I'm off script, so it stopped. So as with many things, voice sync does take a bit of practice to look natural and to kind of get used to the workflow, but it can be really helpful, especially if you're a solo creator like me, where you kind of have to do everything all at once, and this keeps your hands free and your feet free because actually the way that I use the prompter like 90% of the time, which isn't anything you need to worry about with these settings here is that I just use the Elgato foot pedal and then I just kind of manually advance the script here because I usually read it in chunks and I go off on a tangent, read it in chunks and that works, that usually works good for me, but I do use voice sync when I have kind of long, more technical in-depth scripts and I don't wanna be distracted by having to like lean and push the foot pedal button because sometimes that can be a little awkward. And if you do wanna control things manually, you can be in either constant or voice sync mode. It really doesn't matter as long as you don't press the play button down here. So it's not, right now I have voice sync activated, but it's technically inactive because I haven't pressed play. So it's not going to be listening. It's not gonna do anything. I don't have to use voice sync. I can control this even just by scrolling with my mouse or if I had the foot pedal connected or stream deck, I can just control it that way as well. We talked about auto loop a little bit. That just means when your script gets to the end, it will jump back to the beginning. And now we have reading position. So I don't know if you can totally see on this camera when I adjust that, there is a red line that comes across and this is sort of where you would wanna target the line that you are currently reading to be at. A lot of times, you know, some prompters might have little markers and you can even do that on this one. I'll show you how in a second. They kind of go near the line you wanna be reading at. That's a more traditional broadcast thing that you would see in something like a news studio where you're gonna try to keep that because someone's controlling a prompter that the anchor is reading off of and it's sort of two people working together without being able to talk directly to each other. One thing you can also do in that situation to make things helpful, or even if you're just working by yourself, is highlight the text. So if I click that, you kind of notice how the top of the text went dark a little bit. And that's also where I can adjust my reading position. So I can put that up really high if I want to just read like the very top line. I can put that really low. And that just means now as we scroll through this, the lines that I'm reading, it's probably going to be like the the last line that's highlighted is the line I want to be reading. Everything I'm using the Ultra for today also applies to the Yolo Box Extreme, which is a more extreme version with eight inputs. So that's kind of how you can do that. They really fixed this when they first added this feature. It didn't have the option to adjust it. So it just meant that half of your script was <laughs> unhighlighted, inactive, and I, I didn't like that. And now you can totally customize it, which is really, really cool. So it's up to you if you want to use that or not. I'm gonna leave that open as we jump into overlays because this is also something that can be really helpful. You can turn on overlays and then it will actually put a little graphic right here. In this case, I have a square. We could do like a little snapshot thing or just a crosshair. And then this lets you position it on your screen. So the two most common ways you could use this. Oh, also you can adjust the opacity if you want. So if you don't want it to be super bright, I'm not sure. Let me jump over to just the prompter window by itself to make it easier to see. You can kind of see the blue thing moving around there. I can adjust the opacity if I don't want that to interact with my script too much. You can also use this when you're in just regular display mode. You do not need to be in 
text mode to use that. So I have regular display mode, it's right there. And this might actually even be more helpful. The most common thing to use this for is to actually place this right in front of your camera lens. Because even though I'm looking at my whole prompter here, if I look up in the corner, it's still gonna look like I'm not making direct eye contact with you even though I'm looking at the prompter. So you can use that overlay to kind of remind yourself exactly where your camera lens is and then that way you just maintain direct eye contact. And if you don't like any of these options, the cross, the snap, or the square, you can actually click the little plus icon and then add your own if you have like a custom image or something that you wanna use. Another way you might wanna use this besides just using your camera lens is, if I put this back at text and now say I position this somewhere up here, kind of to the left, and now I turn on highlight text, and we can also adjust our reading point. There we go. Now what I can do is this is maybe a little bit more like how a prompter would work in a traditional broadcast environment, where I have not only the text highlighted that I'm reading, but I also have a little marker on the side of the screen that then lets me know exactly where I should look at. So that's kind of the line that I'm focusing on. If I were gonna use this for that, I would actually want to upload my own little graphic and I would probably have it be a little triangle pointing directly to the line that I wanna use because that's typically how it's done. Sometimes it's just a little like rectangle bar, something to mark the line that the person is focusing on. And now, even if I'm thinking of a million other things while I'm in front of the camera, I look at the prompter and I see the line I need to focus on is lit up at the top and it also has a mark right next to it. So if I'm talking to someone, if I'm thinking about other things, if I'm getting some kind of breaking news update and I jump right here, it's easy to go exactly where I need to be reading and that can be a super helpful tool. So that's currently everything in the Camera Hub software for the Elgato prompter. You can mix and match all these features to suit your workflow specifically, but I hope this cleared things up if anything was unclear or you're getting a little bit confused because you get the prompter, it's really fun, but then figuring out how to effectively incorporate it into your workflow can be a little tricky. If you wanna know more about the prompter, either how to connect cameras to it or just the prompter in general, it's one of my favorite tools in my entire workflow that I've ever had. I have a couple of videos for that that you can check out right here.